Hello, my beautiful people. Now, welcome back again to my channel. Now, me be the worry girl. I greet on a call it on a time on a good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I don't want to take on a time today, but if not today be the first time when you they come, God will bless you and to all my returning viewers. May God bless all of you now. So, today I go to read the pre Ginua history of Ishekiri. I don't want to take on a time, so make way start at once. Historically, Ishekiri are said to have migrated from Egypt to their present day location in Nigeria. According to Jackson, Omar Shonjua, Ireye Foju, and Flores, Ejwagara, Maki Leson, Ireye Foju, in their seminal work, Ife Orako in Ishekiri Social System of Nigeria, Ishekiri people came from Egypt after the Battle of Actium in 31st BC. They arrived and settled in the present Wari Kingdom in about 28 BC in Borodo, Ireju, and Ode Shekiri. The leaders of the teams were Ise, Iweret, and Ipit. This part of Ishekiri history is one that can't be dismissed so easily as there are more similarly in Ishekiri language and custom with those of the ancient Egyptians than any other civilization in the world. Just like an old Egyptian catafak, another school of thought said that the aboriginal inhabitants of Wari Kingdom can be said to be as far back as to some few years before the medieval time, when communities were frequently engaged in intercommunal clashes, most especially from the Yoruba communities. John O. Sage said, the people called Ishekiri today did not have a common origin. They represent different migrant groups on which a monarch was superimposed. It is said the much earlier peoples from Ode near Ijebu Waterside and Igala Inupe country had moved to settle in Omadino and Irigbo Okotomu, Ode Shekiri respectively. Others had come from Akure and Owo and through the coast to settle in various parts, including Uregu and Uborodo. Even though they remained a part as independent mini communities, they appeared because of the predominance of the Yoruba stock amongst them to have developed a Yoruba dialect, Ichekiri. Again, it is said that several waves of migration before the 15th century and come a little 16th century. Groups from Igala in Nupe country came in through the creeks, Yoruba from Ijebode, Akure and Owo found their way into parts of the kingdom, and a group from Abo also came in. Some along in the coast came in. When the struggle for the carving out of kingdoms were at its peak, Various communities in the Yoruba kingdom engaged themselves in intercommunal clashes. The resultant consequence of these clashes was a mass exodus of refugees looking for a safe haven. The migrants, like ants moving in Ashelon, had come from diverse places, Akure or Ijebode, through the coast by way of Gulani to settle in various parts, including Ureji and Uborodo. This should explain some affinity between the Ishekiri language and the Ijebu. If we accept this, then there may have been some Yoruba settlements along the Benin and Escravos rivers but it was unlikely that they were found before then. There may have been small fishing settlements. The people of Uborodo and Ogidigbe still describe themselves as a descendant of their immortalized ancestor named Egare, Ikbere, Olaja, Oriwu, and others. Those of Omadino claimed to be descendants of Lenua, the title of the ruler of Ode. We can see that some communities in the kingdom still believe in their ancestral descents before their settlement. Nevertheless, they are still bona fide citizens of the kingdom, 
in view of the monarch's dominance over all the communities in the kingdom. Of all the movements for a safe haven by this migrant group, one that is most instrumental to the carving out of a race that is today known as Ishekiri tribe is that conducted by one Mr. Ishekiri and his family. The journey, which started from Ode in Ijebu, saw them migrating to Keremu. From Keremu, the horde moves to Ijalosa and there finally to Oko Yitemi Okotomu. Presently called Ode Shekiri. From the foregoing text, it can be seen that the word Shekiri, which was corrupted by this variant, Jacri, Jacri, by various Europeans who had contact with the tribe, is not an interpretation of cowardice or a man who could not fight as surmised by Graville and Roth, but rather a word adopted from the name of the founder of a place. While Yuba settlements were maturing along Escravos and Bini rivers, the children of one Ijenoku called Fifa Wadobo and Ishekiri were migrating for Keremu to Ijaso and later from Ijalosa to Okeyitemi, which is Okotomu. Ishekiri led the migration to Okolomu. It was thus head to the settlement of Okolomu when the migrant from Benin arrived. Still on the pre guinea history of Ishekiri, Sir William Morin narrated the story of the Umale. He said that the Umale were a peculiar people, very ingenious, powerful, and rich. Children born to them were the giants of the land, such as the great Akbajiga, Oloku Rijedo of Omadilo, Imusi of Obodo, Ebele of Orere, and Aribo of Ikeneremu. All these are Ishekiri giants of old. An Ishekiri 19th century giant, about 12.6 feet tall, owing to constant wear wage against them by the Olus. And coupled with the unholy manners of the party from Beni, which the Umale were unhappy with, we are said to dematerialize into the ethereal world and cease to dwell physically among the Ishekiris. Our national name, Ishekiri, was the name of one of those Umale, and he was the owner of the quarters where Ijije and Irame landed at Ode Shekiri. Several of Ishekiri's compatriots fled at the sight of the Iroko box, and the crowd which rushed out of it, but the man Ishekiri with the other inhabitants of Okorotom quarter remained and acknowledged the Olu superiority and dwelt with him as his subject. Ginua Ak. The title Olu, which is king, was derived from the exclamation of the Umales of Ode Shekiri at the first sight of the Iroko box. The exclamation was Mori Olu Orun, meaning I see the king of things. What? Like different historical mythology, the story of the Shekiri before the Ginua era is one of the greatest interest and adoration. So my people, this is the prehistory of the Ginua of Shekiri. So I will bring the next one. The next one, not worry, I go upload them differently so that people go digest this one first, okay? So now I go enter after I don't enter now, she will not understand what they talk. Pigeons still had smosha. So, my people, now here I go taste up today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much. I better not forget to subscribe to my channel. I go see you now again for another video. Bye bye.